So some of the challenges of cloud ERP uh, that, that are worth noting here, one is customization, and we've talked a little bit about this throughout the webinar here today so far. The, the customization is uh, relatively limited as you compare it to on-premise ERP solutions. Again, the reason being that you don't own the software and it's multi-tenant, so you're sharing the same software with multiple companies. So obviously you can't just go in and change the software because you're not the only one using it. So that does provide a certain limitation, although there are there is a certain level of flexibility that you do get with SaaS. You can still um, change the screen, you know, the way the screen looks or the color or the layout, um, the, the fields you do or don't see, all that stuff that's just kind of basic configuration or basic personalization of the software, you can still do that because it doesn't materially affect the back end software itself and it doesn't affect the way other people are using the software uh, on the same tenant. Um, but you can't make major changes to the software as, you know, as far as changing, completely changing a workflow or completely changing a, a field name or whatever the case may be or the, the way master data is captured in the system. You, you aren't able to make those material types of changes and, and for some companies that's a good thing because they don't want to make changes to the software anyway. For others, they may think they don't want to change the software, but then when they get into implementation, they realize they need to because if they've got competitive advantages that they're trying to maintain or things that are unique to their company or their industry that they don't want to lose, then SaaS becomes a challenge at that point. And then when you look at integration, integration from SaaS into legacy systems can be a bit more challenging with, with SaaS-based solutions. Um, it's just not as straightforward or easy. It, it can be done, and they certainly have done a good job of building some integration tools that are pretty powerful uh, you know, amongst these SaaS providers and their, their real respective ecosystems. And then when you look at data security, um, this is more of a perception than reality type of challenge. Um, and that is that customers need to trust the vendor security system. There's just a lot of companies out there that just fear that having someone else host their software with all their data, they just it just scares some people. For some organizations, there's a regulatory limitation there, so that's another reason why SaaS will never fully take over the world when it comes to ERP, and that's because any type of government entity or government contractors, aerospace and defense, those type of companies just aren't going to be in a position where they can realistically use a SaaS or a hosted ERP solution because of regulatory limitations. But even beyond those regulatory limitations, even in the commercial space or companies that have nothing to do with government or aerospace or defense, um, there's still a lot of CIOs out there that are afraid of the data issue. And so that's a, a challenge that needs to be overcome by, by SaaS vendors. And, and again, that's more of a, I think it's more of a perception than a reality um, because most SaaS vendors are going to be able to do a much better job protecting data and protecting, uh, providing a secure infrastructure than, than an internal IT department would ever be able to. And then also operational transparency. Uh, the, the customer doesn't have as clear visibility into the system's health and they don't have that hands-on control that they might have when they own the software and have it in-house. So that's not necessarily a good or a bad thing, but for some it could be a perception that uh, you know, is, a, is a ding against uh, SaaS or cloud-based solutions. There's also the long-term costs. Uh, the long-term costs of SaaS actually will add up over time. Um, I know that the common message is SaaS is always going to be cheaper uh, because you don't have to buy the software and you don't have to buy the infrastructure. But the reality is you are going to pay a higher monthly fee than you would if you were just paying maintenance on a on software that you that you owned. So um, again, much like leasing and buying a car, you know, leasing a car might have a lower monthly payment, but you're always going to have that monthly payment. Uh, whereas buying the car, you can either pay cash up front or pay pay off that loan sooner to where you own it without having any type of real monthly fee other than just your maintenance. It's very similar to the SaaS and on-premise. So. Again, if, you're, if your intent is to keep a, a SaaS solution or keep your ERP solution in place for, say, three to five years, and uh, your plan is to either replace it, out, replace it in a few years, or maybe your company is going get to get acquired, or your, your plan is that you're going to sell out or, or be acquired by another company, and you're going to have to replace the system anyway, which a lot of our companies are high-growth, private equity-backed firms that think that way. If that is the case, then, then SaaS very well may be your better bet, because in three to five years, SaaS is probably is going to be cheaper than a full-blown ERP solution. However, if your plan is to keep the software for five or seven or especially 10 years, then ch chances are your SaaS solution is going to be a higher cost over time because you're going to pay for the higher monthly fee as you add storage space, extra bandwidth, extra 
modules, that extra users, that all those costs add up over time, and those costs are static. You know, they they stay that level month to month. It's not like you just pay it off and, and you move on to the next one. Those costs will inherently increase your your cost structure over time, which um, to some companies that that uh, can get pretty expensive. So the one thing to keep in mind is that software licenses itself, and this is the italicized bullet in the middle of the screen, software licenses themselves represent less than 25% of the total cost of ownership of, a, of an ERP implementation, uh, of a typical ERP implementation according to our research and, and our experience. So when you're thinking about, well, you know, my, which one is going to be cheaper from a, um, a software license perspective, just keep in mind that that's one-fourth of your total cost of ownership. The other cost, the other three quarters of the cost, are related to the implementation itself, training employees, the actual configuration of the software, all the stuff that goes into any type of ERP implementation, whether it's SaaS or on-premise. So it's important to keep in mind that any kind of advantage you may perceive with SaaS or on-premise, that's only going to affect, for the most part, that 25% that's related to the software licenses. The other types of costs are kind of fixed costs that you have to engage in, no matter what type of solution you implement. And then finally, there's business complexity. Uh, SaaS can be challenging when you're expanding to multiple multiple departments in a large corporation, or when you're expanding into new geographies or new business lines. It can be more difficult to for SaaS to keep up with those changes, and for you to have the flexibility to allow the software to adjust to keep up with those changes. And the cost savings of the SaaS model may not be as evident in more complex organizations or complex deployments. So I guess a good thing to think about is, is your company fairly complex? Are you, are you dealing with complex products, complex customers, complex industry? Um, if you are, you know, that's going to be, SaaS is going to be more of a strain uh, on your organization than it might be otherwise for other types of companies. And then organizational change. Um, I alluded to this but didn't directly affect the issue of organizational change management. But, but software itself is rarely the hardest part of an implementation. And that's where SaaS really has its advantage, is that it helps with the software part of the implementation. But it's all the other stuff that's hard, and that's the organizational change, the business process changes, et cetera. And those are the really hard parts, and those, those you're going to have to change no matter what. You're going to have to change your processes and change your people as part of any implementation. And whether it's SaaS or a traditional ERP, um, those changes are going to be difficult. So it's important to keep in mind you're not going to automate the whole implementation process just because you've selected one or the other. And the relative inflexibility of SaaS magnifies the organizational change management challenges associated with SaaS ERP implementations, meaning that you can't change the software as you could with the traditional on-premise solution. So the only other answer is to change your people. So that's going to put more pressure on you to manage the organizational change. Whereas with an on-premise solution, you could theoretically change the software to make you know the resistance to the change less uh, over time. Again, there's no right answer either way. It's a trade-off. You're changing something, and there's a cost associated and a risk associated with changing something, whether it's software or people or processes or all three. So it's just important to have those in mind.